Hey guys, as you can see, I'm standing between two of my all-time favorite cameras, the brand new Canon C500 Mark II and the Helium 8K by RED. So it's a RED 8K Helium. This is a Super 35 camera. This is a full frame camera. So I'm making this video because I promised my buddy, which I'm not gonna say his name, <laughs> But he has been sending me a number of texts um, basically saying, are you going to sell your red? Are you being a trader? You're going with the Canon C500 Mark II. Canon cameras have a DSLR look and a lot of other really colorful things. And the bottom line is that I have yet to put both of these cameras head to head to decide if in fact I will be keeping my red. I know at this point after two full days of shooting and one full day of production, so two days of testing, one full day of production, which is today, that I love the Canon C500 Mark II. So in this video, I'm going to explain just the economic side as to why it is that for my business, and I'm not giving anybody advice and saying you should do the same thing I'm doing, but for my business, it makes a lot of sense. And with that, I'm gonna start by saying that on the majority of my productions these days, it is ideal for me to walk on set with three cameras. Let's get started, right? So two very different cameras, two very capable cameras, two cameras that I wouldn't hesitate to pick up and throw on any kind of project. My bias at this point is full frame over Super 35, and that's just because for 2020, my goal is to move all of our productions to full frame cinema cameras. Let's start with the camera body, okay? The Canon C500 Mark II sells for $15,000 $999. Why don't they say 16,000? I don't know. But obviously after tax and some of the add-ons that you will need, it's going to go up higher than that. But let's start again, just body only, 16,000 for the Canon C500 Mark II. The red Helium 8K body only, right? So just the body. That sells, and I'm looking at my notes to make sure I don't mess this up. Today, it sells for $24,500. $24,500, body only. So right away, I would say that it is more economically attainable for the majority of us business owners and indie filmmakers to go with the Canon from an economic standpoint. So what if we need to put a lens on the camera, which we do to make a living? right? I'm going to go with Canon EF lens mount. And the reason for it is that I have two full sets of all primes. I have all the zooms that Canon makes. And I also have cine primes that I use on a regular basis. So for the Canon EF mount on the Canon C500, it's included. So it's part of that $16,000 bundle. On the red, you actually have to buy the mount that you want to use. And they make a couple of different flavors of it. So the aluminum mount, which is the one that I'm using on this red 8K Helium, that sells for $900 today. And I'm using today's prices because when I originally purchased this camera, it was considerably more expensive. But today, so, 24,500 for the body, you want a lens mount, that's an additional $900. Now, in order for the lenses and the lens mount to work on the RED, we also need a, it's called an OLPF, optical low pass filter. So on the RED, you have options. You could choose skin tone priority type of um, OLPF, or you could choose low light, or you could choose the standard version. And then they have some others that are, you know, creative based that are third party available. I will tell you that 
every red owner knows that the standard OLPF is what you want to have in your body for maximum flexibility, even if you're shooting in low light and even if skin tones are a priority for you. There are some hyper specialty cases when you'd want to switch, but the truth is that you don't need any of the others. As long as you have the standard, you're covered, and for the most part, the camera will produce a beautiful image. So that sells for $350 today, standard OLPF. So you can see we're very quickly adding a whole lot of expense. And again, as indie filmmakers, owner operators, and small business owners, this looks a lot more attractive from a financial standpoint. And we're not done because let's say that we play, which we do um, here at my company, in the commercial space, where from time to time, we have to use PL lenses. Well, I only have the Canon EF lenses, which really means I rent the PL lens mount when I need it for my RED in the past. Now, on the Canon, the PL mount will sell for $1,599, so just about $1,600, which I actually think would probably make sense if I end up using the Canon C500 Mark II on a number of commercial projects. But on the RED, the PL mount, the RED branded PL mount, sells for $950, and yet, I've never purchased it. I've always only rented it when I needed it. So will I purchase the one for the Canon? You know, I'm up in the air about it, but right now I am so high on the hog, stoked about what this camera is able to do that I'm thinking, why not buy every possible accessory just in case I need it? But that maybe doesn't make sense for everyone. So let's move on. Side handle. So. If you have ever owned or shot on a Canon cinema camera, you know that the side handle is always included with the body. Side handle is always included. On the red, right now I'm using this Sidekick, which sells for, I believe, about $900. I don't remember the exact cost, but I can tell you that the side handle that would replace this little apparatus here, which basically gives me camera status and allows me to navigate the menus. The side handle sells for an additional $950. So again, it's kind of adding up, right? What if we want a top handle? Like I have a top handle here and I have a top handle here. On the Canon C500 Mark II, it's included. This particular top handle, which I'm not sure if RED continues to sell or not, because I couldn't find it on their website today, sells for, I think I paid $550 for it. And I also have the Outrigger handle, which is another $500. So again, that's not included, but it's adding cost and it makes it super convenient. I will tell you, a downside to this design and the reason why I have it built out the way it is, is because I wanted the smallest possible footprint that would allow me mobility because I, I had it on set before I replaced it with the Canon C500 last week. I can't use, I have props here. I can't use my red bricks, which these are my preferred V-mount batteries because they are larger capacity. But check this out, if I try to put this on, I can't, the handle's in the way, which is one of the reasons why I bought the Outrigger handle because when needed, when I'm not able to plug in, you know, house power to the camera, I would actually need to use either a different, a different battery with less capacity or I would have to replace this handle with the Outrigger handle. You know, food for thought about usability and the whole finances of things. So what if we need an EVF? Because there are times 
where, well, I will tell you, um, and I believe I, we did a video and it was kind of funny. Um, when I collaborated with Armando and we, we compared the Canon C200 against my RED, I didn't fly with my EVF. What I did, um, I packed the smallest possible configuration of my camera. And what ended up is we were outside trying to get exposure and I couldn't make out exposure because this particular screen on the RED, it's not daylight viewable. This is the seven inch touch that goes right on the body. So I don't need any extra cables, connectors, or magic arm to hold it in place, which is the reason why I bought it. I didn't have the EVF, so I had to take off my sweatshirt, put it over my head so I can actually see the screen when I was outside. On that note, the EVF for the red, so DSMC2 EVF kit, because you also need a way to mount that EVF onto the actual body. That sells for $4,150 for the red branded EVF. On the Canon, on the C500 Mark II, the EVF is not included. That's an accessory that you have to purchase in addition to the camera package. And that EVF, this EVF here, sells for $699. So this is the first time where I actually needed to buy another accessory to complete my potential shooting needs. I will say that you don't have to buy the red branded EVF. It just makes it super convenient because there, there is no additional need to figure out how to power that EVF, and there are no additional cables that are needed that you then have to route and cable manage when you do that. But you can save yourself some money if you do something like what I did, which is, again, I'm telling you I got props. I bought the Zacuto Gradical X, and then I put in the software, the tools that I need. In addition to that, I have Condor Blue parts that make it easy to quickly attach and remove it from my camera. And I believe this EVF, without any extras in the software, sells for $1,200 or so. And then you can add, you know, another six to $800 worth of software if you need cross conversion, you know, from HDMI to SDI and so on. But like I said, you then also have to sort out power, which this uses Canon style batteries and makes it really convenient. But all in all, it is an extra expense. The advantage to going with an EVF like this is that you can use it with any camera. I can use this EVF with my C500 Mark II, with my C300 if I want to, with my Canon EOS R. It doesn't really matter. This EVF can get the job done regardless. So what if you need SDI and HDMI outputs on the Canon C500. Again, they're included. No need to spend any extra money. It's part of the camera. It's part of the camera body. It's all there ready for you, right? On the red, you actually need to make some decisions. Red sells a um, this is called the V-mount expander, which is what I would recommend these days. But they also sell one where it just gives you all of those outputs, right? So it gives you HDMI and SDI out, which is what we were talking about, without an actual battery plate. That This plate sells for $1,900. $1,900. So that you can have HDMI and SDI coming out of your red. Now, if you bought the IO expander, not the V mount expander, but the IO expander, then you also need a battery plate, which I have, and I have for a very different reason. But this battery plate sells for another $950 or so. And now I don't know, I don't even know if they still make these, 
but back when I bought it, that's about how much it was. And I think on eBay or maybe used, you might be able to find them for around between 550 and 750. So, you know, keep that in mind. XLR audio inputs with phantom power. Now there are multiple ways for any one person to go about doing this, right? In fact, I have a whole video on how to get professional audio out of your camera in a way that, you know, might work for your budget. So option one, which is the way that I started, was to use the um, Mix Pre 3. I, I believe I used the Zoom recorder before because I've had this for a while. Uh, so I used it before the Mix Pre 3 came out. But if, if you add the Mix Pre 3 or the Mix Pre 3 um, Mark II, you're adding another five, six, seven hundred dollars worth of expense, depending on whether you're buying new or used. If you go with what I'm using for this specific setup, this is a little tiny attachment. It's, it's made by Beach Tech and I believe it's called the DNA Red. This sells for about $650, and it is a terrific, terrific mic preamp. It is made, clearly it's made for the Red because it makes audio just completely painless with incredible um, self-noise, like you can't, it doesn't get better than that, in my opinion, unless you're using an external recorder, in which case, you know, sky's the limit. You can go as high as you want with how some of these professional external recorders cost. The option that I went for after going from the Mix Pre 3 to get professional audio into my camera was this Red Bolt expander. So, this unit, as you can see, very quickly adds a whole lot of extra to the camera, but it gives me two, two professional XLR audio uh, inputs and all of the IO that I have here. I'm not even gonna go into time code because time code is a different challenge with this camera, but regardless, I get the I.O. that I need. In fact, I get two SDI outs and one HDMI out with this guy. The challenge is, is that this older version of the production module cost about the same as the new version of the production module. This one has this little cavity here that allows you to put a Red Bolt um, battery in it, allowing you then to hot swap V-mount or gold mount batteries. When this is in place, this top handle works great. There is no issue. But what you notice is missing from this is a way to attach a battery, which is the reason why I ended up buying this module. And now you can see that it is more than doubling the size of my camera body to get in that solution. Again, the new one doesn't have this cavity. It's not as wide, right? and it has a built-in battery module, but it is still 4700 or 4750 so $4,750 to get professional XLR straight into the red. If you go with, like I said, this, um, like my Beach Tech solution, then we need a way to mount it onto the camera. And that really meant that I had to get a top plate for my red, which is an additional $550 or $600 um, to be able to have mounting points that allow me to use my monitor, have a handle, and then also allow me to mount the XLRs. And as you can see, there are cables that I then also need to manage. So I don't have that issue with the Canon C500 Mark II because the Canon C500 Mark II gives me two XLRs with great preamps, all the audio controls that I need 
with actual physical buttons, which is something I didn't mention. When I'm using the Red Volt Expander, the only way to manage and make changes to my audio is to go into the menu system, which is one of the reasons why having something like the Sidekick is convenient because otherwise all of the menus need to be managed from my actual monitor. A touch LCD, Canon C500, it's included. This touch LCD, which is the seven inch version, sells today for $2,750. I'm just gonna leave it at that. It's not daylight viewable, but that's how much it costs. And that's all for the convenience of not needing any cables and attaching straight onto the body, which I do think it's very convenient. So we'll just leave it at that. ND filters. <laughs> this is, none are included, but it doesn't matter if you're filming in studio or you're doing run and gun, you will need ND filters. On the Canon C500 Mark II, they are included. In order for me to get the ND filter range that I can get out of the Canon C500 Mark II, I need to spend some money on my RED. And the amount of money that it costs for the ND filters for that range, I got the Firecrest NDs because I'm worried about IR pollution. So that was, let me just double check the number here, $2,054. And of course, with those Firecrest NDs, which are four by 5.56, I also need a matte box. And the matte box that I'm now using on a regular basis is actually pretty affordable. I believe it's under 350 bucks and it's made by Bright Tangerine. So there you go, it adds up again. Uh, let's see, recording media. And for the sake of this video, we're gonna go with just one 512 GB media card, okay? Canon includes one. You don't have to spend any money. If you were gonna buy one, it's going to be around $600. But Canon includes it. Red, here's mine. I have two and a half terabytes worth. Each one of these Red Mini Mags today sells for $1,450. This year, so in 2020, or maybe even late 2019, it might've been December, there is a third party option to buy a two terabyte mini mag. It's called the Long Take. And I don't remember the pricing, but this is the first time as a red owner that buying third party media is a licensed option and I'm going to leave that where it is. To get the footage off of the Minimag, we need a card reader. Canon includes one in their package. So no, ad, no extra expense. Red, we need to buy a card reader and there are some third party options. So I purchased the red branded one, which today sells for $195. Batteries. So red doesn't include any batteries, which really means you get to go out and buy your own batteries. And I get that there are lots and lots of brands of V-mount batteries. I went with the red option. Again, larger capacity, longer run times, because the camera, it takes a bit to boot up. So the longer I can keep from having to reboot, the better. So I went with these guys. Canon includes one. And if I'm not mistaken, it gives me 80 minutes worth of record time. And I might have to, uh, not record time, operating time. So I will, when I do my review and first impressions video on the Canon C500, I'll have that accurate. 
but I believe I got about 80 minutes of runtime with the battery that's included. With this battery, the larger capacity, I get roughly 60 minutes worth of runtime on the red. Oh, I didn't tell you how much this cost. I should. The battery itself cost $450, which Canon batteries are like 500, 600. I don't remember the exact number. We need a battery charger. Obviously, if red doesn't include a battery, they're not going to include a battery charger, which really means you have to buy one. I bought the red branded one and that cost $550. So it allows me to charge two batteries at once, even though it allows me to mount two batteries at once. And maybe it is like trickle charging one and the other one, it's doing a little bit of a faster job. It won't charge both at the same time at the same speed. So I'm not sure how that works. The C500 Mark II includes a single battery charger. On the Canon C500 Mark II, I don't need to worry about a battery plate because there's a cavity in the body that allows for the battery to actually go in there. The battery plate is built in. On the red, I need to make a decision. Which module am I putting on there? Does the module include a battery plate? And if it doesn't, then I need to buy a battery plate. And as I mentioned to you guys, that really means that you're spending another 900-ish dollars, unless you buy used, in which case you might be able to get it for around 550. So very quickly, and to recap, if we are going to look at a package that works for a solo operator, for a small business owner, for someone who needs a lot of flexibility in a small package that fits into any number of productions with the Canon, you're looking to spending $18,298 to be able to do essentially all of that. And that includes the PL mount, which if you don't, you end up saving yourself around 1600. Whereas if you're going with red and you're trying to put the two cameras in very similar situations, your package options really need to be closer to $47,399, unless you don't need the PL mount, in which case you're able to save 950 bucks. So guys, this was just a cost of ownership comparison between the two cameras. I am not telling you that one is better than the other. I'm not telling you that you should not go with the Canon or you should not go with the RED for any reasons. There are different times, different situations as to why each camera might be ideal. For me today, I am choosing the Canon C500 Mark II as my A camera, and it makes a lot of financial sense because as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, in a perfect world, I'm rolling on set with three identical cameras. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And until next time, I'm Carlos with Media on Q, helping you guys compete in today's web economy. Take care.